Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Fast Chats. It's Terry Sweeney, contributing editor to Black Hat. And I'm joined now by Mike Sanders, Senior Cloud Security Engineer for ExtraHop. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Terry. Uh, we're here to talk about reclaiming the upper hand in cloud security. Uh, somewhat related to that, though, has been uh, what's fair to say uh, a new kind of pandemic with uh, ransomware attacks. Um, why do you think we're seeing this? And um, more to the point, what do we need to do about it to, to either blunt its effectiveness or, or make it go away entirely? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, this is a great topic and very top of mind for a lot of security professionals. Um, you know, th th there's a lot to, 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 to focus on in ransomware, and, and it's definitely a big, hot news cycle, right? Just like we had supply chain attacks with SolarWinds was our last news cycle, data exfil and cross-site request forgery, you know, cloud and, and news in particular always kind of stays atop. But I don't want to belittle ransomware just because it had a couple of really fantastic news stories recently. Um, it is on the rise. And there are a number of reasons for that. And, and let's kind of talk about some of those reasons. So one of the big things to think about, though, is um, in cybercrime in general or cybersecurity, that ransomware is late stage. Um, it is the end of the breach that started out as just a simple incident. Um, all attackers have to get that foothold first. Um, just like data exfil, you know, ransomware is the, is the last piece um, of the puzzle. Now then, why are we seeing an uptick in cybercrime in general? And I think that kind of, just like you mentioned, another kind of pandemic. So last week, you know, we had a, a mass exodus out of our nice secure homes at, at corporate headquarters. And now with work from home, we've seen a lot of fast and loose, right? It's, it's, you know, we didn't send people home with anything more than a laptop and maybe an endpoint. Um, you know, we didn't send them home with firewalls and all this other great stuff that we have at the headquarters. So the footprint's big and it's very vulnerable. And if we, look, this, yeah, and if, and if we look at something like Colonial Pipeline, right? Um, they had a really broad attack surface, a bunch of stuff exposed. And so, um, so cybercrime is definitely on the uptick. Now then ransomware specifically, why are we seeing that? Um, I think it's because it's easy. Right. And I think it's because it's monetized. So one of the big things that we've seen is this ransomware as a service concept. I, I'm sure you've heard of this. And, and right. that's yeah, like the dark side and, and, and things of this nature. The um, the big problem here is, is that it's very easy to implement and um, very fast to implement. So you've got these um, actors out there that are finding zero day exploits, just like we've always had in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. But now they can you know, pay a little bit of their ransom to these people that write this really fantastic ransomware as a service. And so all they have to do is find a vulnerability, get it in the wild, and then they tack on this ransomware at the end. So again, the incident becomes the breach because of ransomware as a service. And that's why I think we're seeing a lot more of that is because of this interacting between these bad actors. As scam goes, it, 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 ransomware is very much a long game, isn't it? Yes, it is. And so one of the tough parts is, and, and one of the things that we do need to highlight, especially for our security practitioners checking in, is we, of course, don't encourage anybody to pay you know, um, these, uh, these ransoms. And more importantly, if you look at somebody like Colonial Pipeline, uh, unencrypting the data with the tools that were provided by the attackers is so slow that it was faster to actually you know, use business continuity and, and do it the right way. So, so definitely have those business continuity plans in place. Mike, is there anything specifically around ransomware itself that makes it particularly hard to either detect or to shut down? Absolutely. Um, so one of the tough parts, and remember, after that incident, after that initial foothold, ransomware looks a lot like standard file access. Um, you know, it is basically just reading, encrypting, and then writing. Okay. And so, you know, that's not real easy to identify. Um, if you're looking at, you know, just interactions and logs and things of that nature, it's just a normal user interacting with a normal file server. Um, yes, the volumetric is totally different. There might be some key signatures like uh, file extensions, but that's easily um, obfuscated. And so, uh, so for your traditional kind of monitoring tools, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to, to identify ransomware. So it's doing a better job of looking normal and really, really uh, mastering that stealth mode. Exactly. So it, it really cripples your ability to detect and respond. And, and so that's why you do need to take a little bit different approach to, to detection and response of ransomware. Let's shift gears slightly and talk a little bit about network detection and response or NDR. Um, how does NDR not only detect ransomware, but 
how can it also detect other advanced threats? I'm glad I was trying to set you up for, for going right down this path. <laughs> so one of the great benefits around network detection response versus some of your other security plays is that it's very behavioral based. It looks at everything. Um, and so again, it kind of goes back to um, looking at, uh, you know, this user is suddenly touching files they've never touched before or interacting with a server they've never interacted with before. Um, you know, being able to see the volumetric difference, peer group analysis. So a lot of this machine learning and so, so a lot of being able to analyze the entire bucket of what's happening is what allows you to see that, you know, ransomware is actually triggering and, and moving inside your environment. Um, and so that, that helps on the detection piece. But again, remember the best bet is to grab the internet before you get to the ransomware, right? So being able to quarantine that host or kind of, and I don't know if anybody that's listening in remembers the, the Microsoft Blaster worm where you basically just ran around and unplugged machines in order to keep it from spreading. Ransomware is kind of the same thing. You wanna virtually unplug that machine. Um, and so that's where you know the response side is. And so if you can unplug fast enough, then that's how you kind of save your bacon and, and get back to business continuity plans, you know, re-image, get stuff back online as fast as possible, and then hopefully avoid any of these long-term problems. Some great insights on ransomware and what we can do to keep ourselves safe. Mike, thanks for joining us on this Fast Chat today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. We've been talking with Mike Sanders of ExtraHop. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.